I'm Schneck. And I'm Neck. And this is Schneck and Neck Crack, Crack the Case. We're private eyes. And cousins. When a crime's been committed, we use real life police procedures to find the bad guys. And girls. Today, we're tackling case number 547, Dog Gone Missing. Here are the facts. Thursday, 4.30 p.m., Tyler goes with his mom to the pet shop and sees a terrier named Bang Bang. Aww. Bang Bang the terrier? Why is he named that? Because of this, Bang. <laughs> That's why. Huh, fitting name. Tyler wants to buy Bang Bang. Please, please, please. And his mom says yes! Woo! Angie, the owner of the pet store, says Gracie the groomer will give Bang Bang a bath and Tyler could pick him up tomorrow after school. Tyler buys all the doggy essentials. One collar, one leash, seven pounds of dog food, one dog bed, 15 dog treats, one pair of dog sunglasses, one dog sweater, and three dog chew toys. One red, one blue, one white. The next day, Tyler and his mom return to the pet shop at 4.29 p.m. and Bang Bang is gone. Gone. Stolen, snatched, Bang Bang has been dog-napped! <laughs> Who could have done this? Well, there are no clues that anyone broke into the pet shop, so that means Bang Bang must have been stolen by someone on the inside. The inside of what? The pet shop. That means we've got four suspects. Angie the owner, Mike the manager, Gracie the groomer, and Bart the plumber. <laughs> A plumber named Bart? Bart. Oh, gotcha. <clears throat> they all say they're innocent, but one of them must be guilty. We have all of their alibis right here. Angie the owner said, at 1 p.m., Bang Bang was safe in his cage. I went for pizza, and Gracie the groomer went for tacos. There were two people left in the shop, manager Mike and the plumber Bart. At 2 p.m., when I came back, Bang Bang was gone. Bart said, I'll fix the toilet. Then I was out of there at 1.30. Time is money. Manager Mike said, The whole time Bart was here, I was in the back room counting chew toys. Just another lame job that Angie makes me do. Well, by the time I was finished at 1.55, Bang Bang was gone. <gasps> Gracie the groomer said, I got back at 1.58 with my tacos. I saw that the cage door was open and Bang Bang was gone. Mike was in charge while we were gone and as usual, he messed up. Obviously, manager Mike did it. He had plenty of time to steal Bang Bang. But so did plumber Bart. But manager Mike hates his job, so he probably stole Bang Bang to make Angie mad. But obviously Bart wants money, so he probably stole Bang Bang to sell her. Maybe Bart wants Bang Bang so he can blame him for all his farts. Let's look at the crime scene. Bang Bang's cage was cut open. On the floor next to the cage, the police found these pliers. And here's the cage. Hey, look, there's a lock on it. Yep, and Angie had the key. But. Why would Angie try to steal a dog from her own shop? We sent the cage and the pliers to the crime lab. They were both examined under a microscope. See, every tool has little imperfections on it. Tool marks are just like fingerprints. Each set is unique. It's hard to see it with your eyes, but a special confocal microscope uses lasers to measure how deep each mark is and what shape they are. A computer program colors the tool marks. The different colors represent different depths. So if the tool marks on the tool match the tool marks on the cage, we know that these pliers cut that cage. So the question is, who used the pliers to cut the cage? Is it Mike, the manager? Angie, the owner? Gracie, the groomer? Or Bart, the plumber? There's a special test to find out who did it and involves something that you have at home. Your cousin's diary? No, 
Fingerprints. We're going to check the pliers for fingerprints. People's skin has natural oil, so we leave fingerprints on everything we touch. These are mine. Hey, hey, what? Cut it out. <laughs> and we can check for fingerprints by using super glue. Here's how. Forensic scientists place the item inside a box, add some super glue, and heat it up. The glue bonds with the oils that fingers leave behind. Whoa! There are fingerprints on these pliers! Each suspect gave us their fingerprints using ink. Now let's see which ones match the ones on the pliers. Angie's prints don't match. Gracie's a no-go. And it's not Mike. This kind of looks like a zebra. But look, fart the plumber. <laughs> I mean, Bart the plumber is a match. Bart, silent but deadly. Something isn't adding up. Wait, Bart's prints are on the pliers because they're his pliers. Bart said, and I quote, Okay, so I forgot my pliers at the pet shop. Don't mean I'm a dog napper. If you smelt it, you dealt it, Bart. Angie, Mike, and Gracie would have used the key to unlock Bang Bang. Only Angie had the key. Also, someone could be framing Bart. Hold up. Something else was found on the pliers. It's a print from a glove. This means someone else held the pliers. Someone wearing... These gloves. We found them at the crime scene, but didn't know if they'd be useful until now. Oh no! Someone left their gloves at the store? Their mom's gonna kill them. No! Criminals wear gloves to hide their fingerprints. But this glove is leather. Skin, animal skin. Which means it's got a fingerprint of its own. So we can test if the glove print and print on the pliers match with a microscope. It's a match. These gloves touch these pliers. Nice. I bet manager might wore them to cut the cage and steal Bang Bang. Maybe, but it could have also been Angie, Bart, or Gracie. I think it's time for... Pizza! No! The polygraph! Also known as the lie detector test. Everyone says they're innocent, but we'll find out who's guilty when we come back on Schneck and Eck Crack the Case. <laughs> What? We're back with case number 547, part three, dog gone missing. These are the facts. Bang Bang the Terrier went missing at Angie's pet shop between the hours 1 and 2 p.m. Bang Bang is gone? We know that these pliers cut Bang Bang's cage and we found these gloves at the scene of the crime. We have four suspects. Bart the plumber owned the pliers that cut open Bang Bang's cage so his fingerprints were all over them. But anybody could have been wearing the gloves when they used the pliers, like Angie the owner, Mike the manager, or Gracie the groomer. We gotta solve this case before Tyler, who was supposed to buy Bang Bang, goes completely bananas! So we strapped our suspects up to a polygraph machine, otherwise known as a lie detector test. Things like blood pressure and heart rate go up when people get nervous. And people get nervous when they lie. I never lie. Really? Let's see if that's a lie. First, I'm going to ask you a question we already know the answer to. Like, what's your name? Schnick. Great, I know that's true. So now I know your normal heart rate is 90 beats per minute. Now I'm gonna ask you a question and see if your heart rate changes. Did you eat my tuna sandwich yesterday? Uh, no. I knew you ate my
my sandwich. It was delicious. I'll never trust you again. Now, let's see how our suspects did when we asked them about the gloves we found at the crime scene. Angie the owner passed the lie detector test with flying colors. What about Gracie the groomer? Did she wear the gloves? She failed completely. I knew it! Gracie did it! Not so fast. Looking at her records, we realized that she lied about her age. Turns out she's five years younger. So she just lied about her age? What about the gloves and stealing Bang Bang? Well, she was so nervous about the whole thing, we never got a clear read or normal heart rate from her. So we can't trust anything she says as true or false. Bummer. Well, that means she's still a suspect and she's on my naughty list. What about Bart the Palmer and Mike the manager? Bart totally passed his lie detector test. But when Mike said he wasn't wearing those gloves, his heart rate and blood pressure went way up. He was lying! So Mike did it! Case closed! Let's get Bang Bang back! Hold on, the polygraph isn't perfect. It can tell when a person's lying, but not always what they're lying about. So we know Mike is lying, but that doesn't mean he wore the gloves or stole Bang Bang. Life is so complicated. So we know Crazy's a liar and Mike's probably lying. And even though Bart passes lie detector tests, his prints are still on the pliers. So he's still a suspect. And Angie? Well, there are no clues pointing to her, so we can eliminate her as a suspect. Nice! But we know gloves were used. So why would Bart use gloves when his fingerprints were already on the pliers? Maybe somebody's framing Bart. Now we need more evidence. Look at this. Tyler posted 500 flyers around town asking if anybody has any information on Bang Bang. And three witnesses came forward. That means it's time for a police sketch artist. What are you drawing? Nothing. Anyway. Mia, Jessica, and Darnell Davis were eating lunch across from the pet shop when it all went down. So now they're all sitting down with a police sketch artist, otherwise known as a forensic artist. Forensic artists are awesome. A witness describes exactly what they saw, and the artist draws it. You can call me Forensic Artist Eck. What? You're welcome. According to Nia, there was someone in a green hoodie running away from the pet shop with a white puppy under their arm. Jessica saw someone in a green hoodie too, with a white dog that was super adored. Aww. Darnell said, and I quote, puppy puppy, arf arf. He's too, he drew the picture himself. So one thing we know, the purple's wearing a green hoodie. Now we just have to find out who owns a green hoodie. Bart, Mike, or Gracie? Piece of cake. Turns out, they all do. Even Angie. What? The green hoodie is the official hoodie for the local football team, the Leaping Leprechauns. They had a game that day, so everyone had one on. Ah, cheese puffs. Now we're back to four suspects. And whoever took him wore... One of these green hoodies! We ran special tests on them to find trace evidence. Don't know what that means? It's hair! Trace evidence is extra stuff you find at a crime scene that puts the suspect at the scene. Heck, I was trying to be mysterious. When the dog napper stole Bang Bang, some of Bang Bang's fur might have gotten on the hoodie. Wait a minute. Hair comes off easily. See, how do we know if the hair's Bang Bang's or the person who owns the green hoodie? Ow! Under a microscope, dog hair and human hair are totally different. Let's look at the root. Human hair looks kind of club-shaped at the root, but this hair has a shape more like a spade, so we know it's a dog hair. It's Bang Bang's hair! So whose hoodie is it? Hold up. We don't know if it's Bang Bang's hair or another dog's hair. So the crime lab did a DNA test. Everyone has DNA, even dogs. And everyone's is different. Like fingerprints or blood. Where'd you get all that blood? I have my ways. Okay. So the lab compared the DNA from this hair to Bang Bang's DNA, which they got from a hair in the cage. Is it a match? Yes! So who are we throwing in jail? Gracie the groomer. I knew it! Sayonara, Gracie! Derpy dumb! Uh-oh, Gracie has an alibi. She said, 
Hey, I spend all day at a pet shop. Of course I have dog hair on me. Let me see that. Greasy goes on to say, But the plumber, he wasn't here for very long. If he has dog hair on him, he's definitely the culprit. Does Bart have Bang Bang's hair on his hoodie? Yes. Aha! And so does Angie and Mike. Aha! All the suspects were in the pet shop at the same point with Bang Bang, so all of them have fur on them. Bang Bang's one hairy dog. The hair by itself just isn't enough evidence. But look! The lab found something else on the hoodies. Wow. <laughs> things that might finally solve this case. Including some things you actually might have on your own clothes. And we'll tell you what that evidence is when we come back. I need more blood samples. Now just hold still. <laughs> We're back with case number 547, Dog Gone Missing. When we left off, eyewitnesses saw the perp wearing a green hoodie. But all our suspects have green hoodies, and DNA tests show that all those hoodies have Bang Bang's fur on them. So it could be anyone. Well, we have no evidence on Angie, the owner, and very little on Mike, the manager, besides him just being a bad pet store manager. But we still haven't cracked this case. Maybe we need to look at this case in a different light. We can't see everything with our naked eye. <laughs> Do our eyes have to wear clothes? No, but sometimes a machine helps us see things we can't. Like hyperspectral imaging? Surprisingly, that's correct. Hyperspectral imaging, or HSI, is what crime labs use to identify things like stains on clothes. Exactly, so the lab labeled these hoodies A, B, C, and D for each of our four perps and examined them with HSI. A computer scanned each hoodie and gave each stain a different color. The hoodies had stains of mustard, ketchup, grease, soda, melted cheese sauce, and hot dog juice. Yum. But two of our hoodies also had stains of saliva? Gross, our perps drool? Or maybe it's not their drool, but... Bang Bangs! We gathered saliva samples from Bang Bang and matched them with the saliva samples on the hoodies. Wait, how do we get Bang Bang saliva if he's already stolen? Easy. Bang Bang's dinner bowl. Yuck! Turns out, the saliva on both hoodies match Bang Bang's drool. So the culprit was either Bart the plumber or Gracie the groomer? Yeah. <sighs> no! This is so unfair! Why are you mad? This is a great lead! No! I am so done with almost finding out who did it! I need answers! These hoodies were supposed to be the answer! Who stole Bang Bang? Don't trust the evidence! <laughs> Wait! Look at the sleeve! It has a bite mark! That's Gracie's hoodie! This is a big piece of evidence. We gotta test it and see if it's Bang Bangs. I gotta admit, that's a great catch. And that should be the proof we need to find our dog napper and crack the case. Crack this, evil doers! Yeah. Why would you do that? I got way too excited. I immediately regret that. I'm gonna take the hoodie to the lab. X taking the hoodie to the lab where they can measure the marks. Hey! I'm in the lab. Well, what did you find? The marks are photographed, and a computer created a three-dimensional image of the kind of mouth that could have made those marks. But we need to know if the teeth marks are from a dog or a human. A human can bite a shirt, too. For example, here's one of your shirts. Hey, why'd you do that? To prove my point. Dogs have more of a curve bite than humans, and the sharp canine teeth are more prominent than these teeth. Those don't look human. Yep, it's definitely a dog's bite. Lucky for us, Angie had a full set of Bang Bang's x-rays, so if the marks match Gracie's hoodie, we know that she did it. I bet it's Bart the plumber. Oh, I bet it's Gracie the groomer. Oh, you're on. I bet all of my Halloween candy. Fine. I bet 
My monogrammed duck whistle. A duck whistle? It's cool. Sure it is, Snack. Let's just see who done it. It's, it's a, a match! match! Bang Bang's mouth matches it completely, which proves he bit Gracie's hoodie. Put her away for life! Sayonara, Gracie! But wait, how did she do it? And like, why? When shown all the evidence, she totally confessed. She said, I wanted to bring Mike down. I hate being a dog groomer. It's all the hair and the drool, it's gross. I knew that if Bang Bang the Terrier went missing on Mike's watch, that Andrew would fire him for sure, and I'd get his cushy job. So instead of going to lunch, Gracie waited outside until Bart and Angie left. She was planning on using the key on Bang Bang's locked cage, but when she saw Bart lift his pliers, <laughs> she decided to use those so it looked like Bart did it. In order for Gracie's fingerprints not to get on the pliers, she used the gloves, but Bang Bang bit her hoodie on the way out. How did she know Mike wouldn't suddenly come out of the stock room? Remember the lie detector test said that Mike was lying about counting those chew toys? Well, it turns out he wasn't. He was napping. And Gracie heard him snoring, so the coast was clear. Uh -huh. Mike woke up just in time to see Bang Bang had been stolen, and Gracie came in from lunch acting surprised. Angie fired Gracie immediately. Mike promised Angie he'd never sleep on the job again. She forgave him but demoted him to groomer. Oh. We also found Bang Bang at Gracie's house, and he was finally reunited with Tyler. Hey guys, I finally have Bang Bang back. Watch this, Bang. Oh. He's the greatest, thanks again. Come on. This was a rough case, but we solved it. Like we always do. I'm Schneck. And I'm Eck. And we'll see you next time on Schneck and Eck Crack the Case. case.